Um, we have some very special guests today. So let's make sure that we are showing 100% and that we are showing our virtues today. Um, this is very exciting for everybody. Um, and we have been talking about careers from colonial times. It seems like we've been talking about it for 10 weeks since school started. Um, so I think that this is a good way for us to go ahead and finish up our colonial times as we move into the American Revolution, um, to talk about present day, what our careers, um, what careers look like in present day. I think we've already learned a lot from our architect and our author that we didn't know. And I think we'll learn a lot today from um, Mr. Minch and Mr. Swinton about the TV and film industry. So very excited to have them today. So you guys just be a good audience. We're going to do our little interview. And then at the end, if you have some relevant questions for them, we'll go ahead and take your questions, OK? And if you didn't know, little Josephine, she's in second grade in Miss White's class. She's little Minch. She's, she's little Minch. <laughs> she's my little <laughs> Minch. All right, so <laughs> little Minch will get her hair messed up. Yeah, I will. Boys, you ready? All right. Can we start? Okay. Welcome, Mr. Swinton and Mr. Minch. My name is Dylan, and this is Adrian. We will be interviewing you today. What kind of work do you both do? He said, what kind of work do you both do? So my biggest job, guys, is being dad to these three kids. That's the biggest job I've got. But the job that pays the bills is called uh, President and General Manager of Tyler Perry Studios. So what that means is that my team and I run a big television and movie studio that allows people like Mr. Swinton to come and produce and shoot uh, movies and television at the studio. And my job is to produce all of the television shows, movies, and plays that we do at Tyler Perry Studios. And uh, I know that that word, what is a producer, but uh, a producer uh, is the one who makes sure that you have actors and sets and lights and cameras and a director and writers and a producer puts the whole thing together. And so that's what I do for our television shows and our films and theaters. Okay. How long have you been in this type of job? So I've been doing this, and I think this is something that might be important for you guys, is that when I was young, I thought all I wanted to do was not hate my job. Because my dad, he didn't like his job, and he'd always complain about going to work. So I thought all I want to do is make sure I want to go to work. So I bet you all have some classes you really like, right? Some classes maybe not your favorite. So that's kind of how you work with, that's how I've worked with my job. So I've always tried to f go to the classes or the jobs that I really like. So to answer, the, to answer your question, I've been doing this for about 25 years. But haven't been, doesn't feel like work, it feels like fun. Well, I agree with Mr. Minch. Uh, I, since you said this type of job, I've been working in the entertainment industry my entire adult life, uh, writing and directing, although for the first uh, 10 years of my professional experience, I was a teacher, and I taught high school film and theater, and then, uh, but in the evenings, I would direct plays or do short films that I wrote and directed and would put my friends in uh, but you know then eventually I transitioned out of that wrote for a few TV shows I wrote for a TV show called The Proud Family that that might be one that you guys that would have seen it was a animated sitcom but uh, did did that for a while and so uh, you uh, you, oh really okay oh. <laughs> I don't want to say I've been doing it for 25 years because that'll date me, but it's probably been about that. So. <laughs> what are good skills you should have to work in a TV and movie production? Oh, okay. 
Well, um, I think that in the, in television and film, uh, there are so many skills that are needed. You know, I would say first thing, like in any artistic career, um, you do have to have, I think, a talent for acting or a talent for writing or a talent for directing, although these are also skills that can be taught and are taught in schools. But I think one of the first things it requires is an interest and a love and a talent for whichever area that you're interested in. And then, of course, in television and film, um, there are people who are camera people or they work the sounds and lights to capture what the writer wrote and what the director directed and what the actor acted. So for television and film, you know, I think it's a, a love of one of those areas. Either you like to to costume people or you like to build a set or you like to act or you like to write. Um, whichever area in that in that um, that 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 fits you, then uh, that's the kind of skill set that you need. You know, I hope. So, you know, as you as you, everybody looks around. There's four people right now in front of the camera, right? And and there's, I don't know, forty five people sitting back here. Yeah, that's so we're like the cameramen and stuff. Exactly. So that's that's about how it works. There's about four or five people that'll be in front of the camera, and then there's a crew behind it. So if you like numbers, you can be in the accounting department. If you like to build stuff, you can be in the in the set department and make set pieces. So. Um, the actors, they seem to get all the glory, right? They seem, you see them on, you're the ones you see on TV, but it's all the people behind the camera that, that make it happen. So, um, our business is a little different that it needs just about every type of person. Um, you know, we hire security guards and lawn maintenance people and plumbers and carpenters and electricians and accountants and painters and artists. So, um, our business is, a, is a, got a lot like this room. There's all kinds of interests. And then there's a few people that that get to they are in front of the camera. That's right. And I'll add one more thing. Um, it's also very common for people to come into the entertainment industry and not know where they want to work. A lot of times, people come in and just say, "Hey, I want to work in TV and film," but they don't know exactly where. And that is something that I see at the studio every day. We hire what's called production assistants, and a production assistant is a very young person. They're probably about 19, 20, 21, maybe just graduated from college, maybe just graduated high school, and they come to work at the studio. And the great thing about being a production assistant is you get to see everything. So our production assistants come in, and after they work for two years, I usually see them, and they say, hey, Mr. Swinton, I'm now a costumer, or hey, Mr. Swinton, I'm now a a camera grip or hey Mr. Swinton I'm now a set designer because they come in as a production assistant they get exposed to every area and then based upon that they they make a decision as to where they want to work what kind of technology do you use and what is the coolest new kind of technology that you use okay. <laughs> you know I uh, the technology changes every day. We use uh, so many different cameras. You know, the, the the brands are the same as what you buy out of the store. For example, the Canon. You know, we the, the Canon makes so many different uh, cameras, but we work with a lot of. We work with cameras. We work with lights. We work with sound and. I feel like every six months they come out with something new. I feel like as soon as we buy a camera, it's out of date. So, <laughs> but um, they uh, we 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 work with a lot of different technology and camera lighting, sound, um, so that you know we can make pretty pictures. When did the film industry begin, and how do you think it has changed over time? Okay. Well, um, the film industry, believe it or not, uh, began at the, the last part of the 19th century, um, where we had, as soon, very shortly after there were cameras, there 
were people who realized that you can make these pictures move. So as we came into the, the last part of the 1890s, we started seeing the first uh, moving pictures, if you will. They were very, um, uh, I, would, I don't know what the, I was going to say mundane, but the, the, they, they were very primitive. You know, there was just a box that you would look in and they would turn it and you would see the pictures and it would make it look like the pictures were moving, you know. And so obviously that was so cool to them back then that uh, they began to, the technology began to do its thing and it got better and better and better. And eventually there were, um, uh, you know, silent pictures because at first the movies and TV shows had, uh, they were black, well, TV was much later, but um, they they were black and white pictures only. They didn't have the technology for color, and there was no sound. So you'd have to watch a movie, and you'd have to just look and see what was going on, but there was no sound, you know. But you could look and see what was going on and kind of get an idea as to how, as to what the story was. And so it, it began... Uh, over a hundred years ago so and it's gotten bigger and better and more pretty as the years have gone by how many movies have you made <laughs> okay. um, movies I, I I have produced about 10 films 10 10 feature films that have come out in the movie theaters that you guys could have seen and uh, TV shows I have produced about, uh, I feel like about 300 episodes of television. So, a lot. <laughs> How have movies changed using animation? So the way the movies have changed with animation, you used to have, back when Walt Disney was doing it, you drew every single cell. And you had to, and so if you were going to, our business works in 24 frames per second. So for one second, 1,001, you would have 24 different drawings to get to that one second to move my hand. You used to have to draw, you had what was called key artists. They would draw the hand, your hand here, and they would draw your hand when it finishes. What's, ch what's changed now is your artists can put in and draw the first frame, the first keyframe, the last keyframe, and then the computer can figure out when you say, I want it to take one second to go from here to here, 1001, the computer will draw the rest of it in. So the computer still will help um, make things quicker, but you still need artists to draw. And now instead of using, instead of doing it on, on cells, You'll draw on a on a tablet, or you actually draw on the screen. You okay. So so it's so and so the computers have helped make the process more efficient. But you still need to be an artist. If you're not, you have to do that with animation. How do you feel that your job is helping others? That's a really interesting question. How is it helping others? Well, one is um, my job helps give people a place to go to work, right? Everybody's got to go to groceries and buy groceries and pay the rent or pay the mortgage. So we, we create a place for people to come to work. Um, a fun number is last month we had almost 75,000 people come to the studio to come to work. So we're creating a place for people to work. Um, and I think, and I may speak for, for Mr. Swinton a little bit, what we also do is, as our business is we create entertainment. So we, we're in the business really of manufacturing a place for people to have, to take a break. And so we do two things. We, we create a place for people to come and earn a living, and then we create a product that gives people a break and helps them hopefully laugh or cry or be sad or feel emotion or, and experience, experience life and, and, see, and see different things. And I, um, that's a great question, by the way. And it's something that many artists believe that when we create something, we want something that will 
make the world a better place and that will help people. And we're fortunate enough to work for a man, Mr. Tyler Perry, <clears throat> who is very serious about that. Whatever TV show or movie he creates, he always wants to make sure that there is a message that people can take from the movie that will help them. Because sometimes in life, people can be having a hard time. They might be having something, a hard time in their family. They might be having a hard time in their relationship. They might be having a hard time with somebody who's ill. And so uh, when you can watch a movie about it, there's something about watching a movie about something that you're going through that makes you feel better. And so uh, one way that we do help people is to write stories that relate to what people are going on, that's going on in their life. And it, you know, it makes them feel better. When did you know this would be your career? So, so the, you wanted to know when did I know this would be my career? I think I said a little bit earlier that what. I know it's only when I have the microphone it goes off. What's with that? Maybe it's like the gong where they, you want me to be kind of get off the stage. So you guys, you all remember a little bit earlier I said, you know, what I wanted to do was not wake up and hate my job because you spend so much time there. Why would you do that? So I didn't really know this would be my career. I did lots of different things. I worked in the hotel business um, for 10 years, like Mr. Swinton taught for 10 years. Um, I, I've done a lot of different things. So what, what happened was, I'll get you one second. Um, what happened was is I just wanted to make sure that I, when things, jobs came available and I thought that would be fun, I wasn't afraid to go try it. It's kind of like jobs are some, some, sometimes like food. You look at it and you go, I don't know if I'd like that, but you try it and you like it. So that's kind of how I got into this business. I also got into this business by doing a good job in my other jobs. And because my customers would become my bosses. And so your, what you do now and your reputation will help you with your career. So I always want to work for a client or a customer of mine. So it's really important that you do the best you can because it always helps you out. But um, a lot of it's like trying new foods. So I think I'll try that. And I liked it or maybe I didn't, but at least I tried it. Well, for me, um, I, I do know that specific moment. I think this, uh, uh, that's one thing that I loved when uh, Ms. Friedman was telling us about the fact that this school is project-based because it gives everybody an opportunity to learn about a lot of different things. When I was in school, they always pushed me into math and science classes. You know, if you get good grades back then, they were just gifted meant you were, belonged to math and science classes. And they didn't, ne they, I ne no one ever uh, tapped into my gift of writing or directing or, uh, or acting. And so it wasn't until I was in college and I got to take a theater class and I had to do this huge play and I fell in love with it at that minute. And uh, I've been working in entertainment ever since that first theater class that I took in college. So that's when, that was my moment. Like this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. And I'm happy to have had that moment. How long does it take to film a movie? Oh, you can answer that. Okay. Uh, okay. Mark, Mark, so Mark, Mark's the one who makes the movies. Uh -huh. I'm the one who makes sure that the place runs. So Mark can make his, or Mr. Swinton can make his movies. So that's the kind of the difference between us. He's the creative and I'm the operations person. So very, very different jobs. Yeah. That's what the coordination is? Absolutely. Yep, that's what it, that, that's that's how he coordinates it all. Absolutely, um, I uh, it, it takes usually about three months to make a movie. Uh, in general, it takes about three months. Um, it can take longer depending on the kind of movie you're making. If you're making a movie with a lot of special effects, explosions and spaceships and all that, it could take up to six months or so to make a movie. Six to eight months. Uh, if you're doing a movie on a small budget because you're an independent filmmaker, or if you're doing a movie uh, just on, on, a certain, on a certain budget. It can, it can go faster. Now, 
at Tyler Perry Studios, we make movies faster than I ever thought they were possible to make them. Uh, it takes about three months in the world that I came from in L.A., but Tyler shoots his movies in about two weeks, you know, which is very, very fast, you know. But um, there are a lot of reasons for that, you know, and, uh, and a lot of it comes back to budget and those types of things. But, um, yeah, it, it usually takes about three months. How do you develop scenes for a movie? Yeah. <laughs> you want to add in? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, when it's all about telling a story, in 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 TV and film, what we do for a living is we tell stories, and so when you are a writer or director, and an actor you spend a lot of time with how do we tell this story and develop the story. So you develop it scene by scene by scene. So if I'm telling a story about a guy who wants to go to the moon, you know, I decide to write the story and I write a scene where he tells his mom, mom, one day I want to go to the moon. And then we decide in this movie, let's put another scene where he meets the person who works at NASA. And he says, hey, sir, I really want to go to the moon, you know. And the guy says, well, come work for me. So you, you figure out scene by scene how you're going to write the story and develop it so that you, you get a full story. Okay. Have you received any rewards in your career? So it's a good question. So it, it, yes, there's been there's been certain awards um, that we get and we get recognized for. It. But you know, this is the reward that you get that you get to have your kids come to school and and spend time with your family and and help out. This is the real reward. So the reward, the biggest reward I've gotten in a long time was being asked to come here and spend time with you guys and maybe open your eyes to a, to a little bit of a different world. So that's probably the, the, the biggest award I've gotten in a long time. Fantastic. I think, yeah, for me too, <laughs> your, your family seeing what you do and being happy. What movies and or TV shows are you working on now? Yeah, sure. So there's a movie coming out um, on uh, the 4th of October, tomorrow. Of November. Well, I was going to talk about First Man. Oh, first man. So Universal Studios made a story about Neil Armstrong called First Man. That shot on our lot. Um, that looks to be like the, potentially an Academy Award winning movie about Neil Armstrong's experience being the first man to walk on the moon. They shot that on our lot that was very fascinating because most of the rocket ships you'll see in that movie were all what we call miniatures they were all made in 3d printers um, the biggest 3d printer was four feet tall and about three feet wide and it made a saturn V rocket that was full scale it took about a week so we've had that movie we've had we've had a lot of different movies we have our famous the walking dead has a set from sonoya on our lot um, we did a little movie about some ladies who like to sing called Pitch Perfect 3, you may have heard of. They shot on our lot. Um, so it's, although it's called Tyler Perry Studios, it's not just Mr. Perry's projects that shoot there. It's a lot of other projects that shoot there as well. Um, so while Mr. Perry's my biggest customer, he's not our only customer. Uh, I just uh, finished producing uh, uh, another uh, uh, was a season of the haves and have nots. It's a TV show. There's a TV show called If Loving You Is Wrong. We just shot another season of that, and um, we d we shot in April a movie called Nobody's Fool, which comes out in theaters on November second. It stars Whoopi Goldberg and um, Tiffany Haddish and a bunch of people that you guys may or may not know. But those are the last three projects I've been working on. What kind of degree do you need to work in the film industry? That's a great question. Yeah. So, so to work, this is a this to, to work in the film industry. Some people will go to school. They'll go to NYU Film School or UCLA Film School, 
and they'll get a classic training in the business. But you also, what you really, you don't also don't have to have a college degree. You you have to, what you really need to work in this business is a really good attitude. Be willing to get up early in the morning, stay out late at night, be cold, be out in the rain. Because as Mr. Swinton said, the first job you're going to get, no matter what education you received, is you're going to work as a production assistant. And what that really means is, hey, I need you to go get that, and I need you to go do this, and you need to go do it really well and be the first one there in the morning and the last one to leave, and nights and weekends and holidays. So what you really need to do is, as important as your education is, is to have a great attitude because a lot of people want to work in this business. You get to go places and see things that people only, most people only get to see on, on, in movie theaters or on the television screen. We get to go and see those places and go and do those things. So the, the, the real answer to the question is degree. College degree is important, but it's certainly not necessary. Yeah. I, I agree that, that you don't have to have a college degree to work in entertainment, but you have to be, like I think in most careers, good at what you do. Uh, when I am trying to find a writer, a director, an actor, a cameraman, a cinematographer, I am not as interested as if they went to college for it. I'm interested, or can you act? Or can you direct? Or can you write? But one of the things that helps you to be able to write, direct, or act is to go to college and study it. You know, but so it is something that I would always suggest because it does help you to be great at what you do. But like in any profession, what's most important is that you have a great attitude, that you work hard, and that you are good at what you do, that you're competent. Do you have any advice for students who would possibly want to be the president or vice president of a TV pro pro production studio like yourselves one day? So, so my advice to be successful in your career is, and a, and a gentleman a long time ago told me this when I was selling copiers when I first got out of school. He said, he said, you take care of today and do everything you can to do the best job you can today, and tomorrow will take care of itself. And that's, that's how you get to that job. You do the very best job you can every single day, and when you go to bed, you know you've done the best you can, and don't worry about tomorrow because you can't affect tomorrow today. Just take care of today. Do your best you can. Do your best in school today that you can, and then things will just happen, and opportunities will come up. And it will be based on doing everything you can every day to be your best. I agree with that. I think that you have to work hard and be your, you know, to, to do your best. I also believe that if you want to work in entertainment specifically, that you have to believe in yourself, believe that you can do it. I think you have to know that you can do it. A lot of times you'll be told, ah, you want to do that? That's so far-fetched. It doesn't happen. For you'll be told so many negative things, and it's just important for you to realize, if I believe in myself, I can do it. So I think that's one of the important things. And then obviously, then you put that with hard work, and then nobody can stop you. Thank you for your time. You've really helped us to better understand the film industry. You're welcome. I think that we need to give these two a lot of shine for their excellence in coming today. Thank you so much for your time. Well, can I can I give you guys back some shine? Yeah, you guys this has are been so a lot of fun. well behaved. So, and to the teachers, I'm so impressed. They're so well behaved, and everybody's so smart, and great questions. So, really, uh, really impressed with you.